G'day everyone, welcome back to another weekly tipping video on the channel. I'm going to be going over my tips for round 24, the final round of the home and away season. A lot of season defining games coming up this week. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you do go on to enjoy today's video. And as always, let's quickly start off with how it went last week. Okay, quick look now from round 23. I got myself a 5 out of 9, so not a bad week. There were a few tips, obviously, weren't able to get up. But first off, went with the Swans. I know a handful of people would have went with Essendon for a sneaky tip, but the Swan is too good. My actual margin was 6 points, ended up being 39. Uh, the Suns, we all thought, win well at home, but good stuff from Melbourne. Bouncing back under the pump a bit. And, uh, yeah, their defense and contest really came to the fore. The Giants against the Dockers. This one felt like a 50-50 game. Great game to watch. Back and forth, but just that Giants class. And Jesse Hogan, power, really soared over the top. Uh, went with the Lions. Really should not have lost this game. Uh, they started off well. They should have put the game to bed. But, again, the Pies do it. One of their classics uh, always come back from the dead and win it by a point. Uh, the Cuts thought they'd get it done and I was very close to going with the Saints here and it was a huge second half from them. They got the win and then went with Port Adelaide over the Crows. Felt they were due for a showdown win. For the Sunday games, the Dogs over North, Hawthorne over Richmond. And geez, I was bullish on the Eagles and they let me down. Great response, though, from the Blues. Quick look now at my tipping competition leaderboard updates. Having a look through, nobody got themselves a full 9 out of 9 score in the competition. So, as for who is leading my comp, it still is Wet Toast Eagles leading with a total score of 159. Okay, let's now begin with our tips for round 24 with a dead rubber <laughs> between Melbourne and Collingwood. Both of these team seasons are done. Well, as for Collingwood, they'll probably have to win this game by... 150 points plus if there are any chance of making the eight. So pretty much it's a dead rubber. Uh, but as for both sides, Melbourne, really strong performance last week against the Suns. I thought that ball movement was excellent. Uh, Jack Viney recently re-signed. He had a huge game. Thought in general their defense and contest was impressive, especially with the absences of Oliver and also Stephen May, who will be out, of course, for this game against the Pies. Pies are off the back of a really spirited win over the Brisbane Lions. Who'd have thunk it, eh? They still have a bit of gas in the tank, but it is their season done, though. Uh, they did not have results go their way last week. For the Dacos brothers were outstanding, huge in that comeback win. And you'd think as well, if the Pies are to get up, some of their smalls get highly involved as well. Bo McCrory, Lockie Schultz. Very good games last week, especially late in that game. So I am interested to see if Melbourne are able to replicate that sort of performance against the Suns. Um, are they able to really kill them through ball movement? Uh, that's been a bit of an issue this year for the Pies' defensive transition. I thought Darcy Moore's game was better last week, though. They have been pretty competitive against uh, top 10 sides. A lot of close games have had, especially... Uh, at the MCG. So this one could really go either way, but the Pies seem to have a bit of the wood over Melbourne. So I'm going to swing my tip towards them here. Uh, just don't know really what to expect. Are we going to see a poor Melbourne outfit, a strong Melbourne outfit, and vice versa for Collingwood? But uh, I think the Pies will pip them here against the D. So we'll go Collingwood for your Friday night, and we'll tip them by 15 points. For the Saturday games now, first one up at 1.45pm, we have the Cats taking on the Eagles down there at the Cattery. Well, for Geelong, if they are to win this game, they'll lock in a top four spot. And that should really be the case here against a bit of a depleted West Coast Eagles side, final round of the season. Usually these sort of bottom 10-ish sides in the final few games of the year, they down tools and they just want to get that season over and done with. So... Really off the bat, this should be a, a Cats win here. The Eagles have a poor record as well down there at GMHBA Stadium too. I don't think they've won there since the late 90s, I'm pretty sure. I think that's the same with the, SC, with the SCG too. The Eagles will certainly need a bit of a stronger response. I just thought their efforts and their basic skill, just their skills and their fundamentals were poor. Totally out the window. They could not move the ball. They fumbled within you know, easy passages of play uh, and just some of their efforts were definitely disappointing. So... We've seen it, though, the past, before that game, the past three weeks, they played some uh, good patches of footy, so can they try and do a number on that uh, on that Cats midfield? But for a four-quarter uh, point of view, can't see the Eagles getting on top here. It should be a pretty cruisy win at home, you'd think, for the Cats, um, and maybe they'll rest a few of their players heading into finals. So Geelong to, talk, to lock in the top four, we'll go with the Cats here by a convincing margin of 45 points. And then roughly 30 minutes later at the MCG, we have Richmond taking on the Gold Coast Suns. Uh, the Tigers are going to have a few retirees for this game. We all know Dusty Martin retired uh, a few weeks ago, and Dylan Grimes just announced his retirement, uh, I think, yesterday as well. So, will that get the spirits up for the Tigers? I've been sort of a, a bit of a sucker for them uh, with tipping. I've expected them to maybe pinch one more result before the season's end. They've 
pretty much sewn up the the wooden spoon even uh, if even if they are to win this game probably don't have the percentage to overtake North Melbourne uh, as for Gold Coast certainly one of their worst performances if not the worst uh, last week against Melbourne uh, just totally shot out of the water um, with defending ball movement and uh, yeah their contested game was really disappointing they'll definitely want to win this game and pick up another away room away win um, especially and Always picking up those wins at the MCG uh, does a lot of big things for the club, especially for Gold Coast. Got to get back to that midfield dominance and, as I, as I always say, got to really improve the cohesion going inside 50. Given how poorly Richmond have played, the Suns, on paper, should be too strong here for the Tigers, but I might go against the grain. I still don't trust Gold Coast away from home, even if they are playing the absolute worst of a worst opponents. Uh, they lost against the Eagles, they lost against North. Can they even win here against the Tigers? We all know those interstate sides sometimes struggle a bit on the G. Uh, but Gold Coast should win this game, but I'm going to go with the Tigers here. They'll most likely get the spirits up, and they want to finish off this season strongly here. So, going to go against the grain. Upset tip here with the Tigers, and they'll pip the Suns here by six points. And the next game up at 4.35, down in Launceston, or Launceston, however you say it. Hawthorne taking on North Melbourne. Uh, the Hawks, yeah, definitely peaking at the right time, heading into what should be a final series should they win this game. Just like a few other teams, North had one of their worst losses of the season against the Dogs last week. They just couldn't keep up with their stars in that midfield and four of the ball. Sam Darcy was massive kicking. Pretty sure, yeah, seven goals. Uh, Bontempelli and Trelaw, they just keep on getting it done. Richards had another superb performance. They just couldn't keep up with a lot of that high, that high 10 forward line and midfield. So I guess the same question has got to be said. Can they keep up with the stars of Hawthorne? Because, geez, loving their small forwards, Hawthorne, and just loving their whole midfield group. Uh, they're playing with just such high levels of chemistry and cohesion. Uh, their spirits are up. Their morales are up. And you can't really see North Melbourne knocking off the Hawks here. They have bolts into pretty much every game so far in the second half of the season. And yeah, they've lost a couple, like against Geelong, etc. Uh, but they're just um, they're playing with confidence. And yeah, North should not really be much of a challenge for the Hawks here, let's be honest. Don't think Harry Shazel will be coming into this game either for the Kangas. So yeah, Hawthorne in mighty form. And they should be playing finals football this year. Who'd have thunk it at the start of the season? We'll tip Hawthorne here in a convincing win. Go the Hawkies by 48 points. And then for Saturday night footy, first game up at 7.25 p.m. down in Brisbane. We have got the Lions taking on Essendon at the Gabba. Uh, Brisbane, well, they've probably shot their season away a little bit. They'll have to uh, rely on somehow West Coast beating the Cats if they do want to push up into the top four. But those last two games, they really should have put in these games to bed and picking up the wins. I thought they were in good control against the Giants. They let it slip and... Geez, just another loss where they've uh, gotten out of control uh, against uh, the, the Pies. This has been a bit of an issue for Brisbane. They just haven't been able to finish off games so well, probably even the past few seasons too. But about this game, they are facing Essendon, and I feel like these two sides have some good quality games. I'm pretty sure, I think it was like two years ago, uh, Essendon were able to pick them at the Gabba. And if I remember last year's game, I'm pretty sure Essendon did put up a good fight, and the Lions only won by roughly 20 points. So I think Essendon were leading at half time. It was a close margin. So I think Essendon will come to play here, but to be fair, it's the final round of the season. Their year's done. And what we've seen from Essendon in the final rounds where the season is done is they play poor footy. So our play is going to be downing tools here, let's say. Um, just what's hurt them the last fortnight, though, is I think just their composure and their efficiency inside 50. A lot of just poor decision making going forward to centre. That's what's really let them down. And they finish off games sometimes pretty poorly. Uh, as well, like they did against Sydney in that second half. You'd think Essendon put up a bit of a fight. Um, I think their pressure in the contested game has been pretty good. Um, and look, they might push Brisbane with that, let's say. I think this one will be pretty close in the first half, but just Brisbane's class. Um, they need a bounce back here. They'll be fired up. Uh, they want to play a good brand of footy here, heading into finals, and what's most likely going to be a, a home elim elimination final here. Um, they've just got so many targets for the ball, uh, and especially in the midfield. Um, you know, We're expecting a bit of a bounce back from the likes of Cam Rayner and Bailey, who were disappointing late in that game against the Pies. So yeah, Brisbane here should be too strong for Essendon, and we'll go to the Lions here by 24 points. And then for the other Saturday night game, we have the Swans taking on the Crows at the SCG. Uh, Adelaide, their year is done, but post by they've been they've been good in some games, but they've been poor. I mean, what did uh, that uh, Italian coach say? Sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit. That's probably a, a good way to describe Adelaide. Uh, but they had a pretty gallant performance, I felt, against uh, Port. They were leading. 
the game up until a bit of a turning point in the match where Isaac Rankin did get that nasty bump from Dan Houston. So he's going to be out of this game uh, with concussion, of course. thought the pressure game was really good um, against Port Adelaide as well. So they want to finish off the year strong. And, hey, they want to obviously gain a bit of revenge here after uh, they did uh, lose against the Swans earlier in the season. As for Sydney, though, they have pretty much locked in the top spot. They'll need to lose this by... Probably, what, 100 points if they are going to slip up on percentage here. So even if they lose this game, they still should have the top up all sewn up. Uh, but yeah, they want to, again, similar to like Brisbane, head into a final series and play good footy here. Uh, the turnover game of ball movement was really impressive against uh, the Dons, especially in that second half. So they'll definitely want to uh, bring that to the fore. They should get back in Chad Warner for this game as well, which will definitely um, you know, improve their midfield stocks. I like what they've done to Mills, though. They've decided to put him back in defence. He played 100% of uh, game time in defence last week. So a bit of him with uh, a bit of him being a loose behind the ball uh, could really improve Sydney's defence. Of course, they'll need to start off this game a lot better, though. This is what's been uh, a bit of their Achilles heel this year. So, hey, Adelaide might pip them early on here, but uh, I just think for a four-quarter point of view, especially at home, I don't think the Crows have the, uh, have the firepower, especially with the absence of ranking to uh, cause an upset win. Though, though I think I'll push them in the first half, but Sydney's class uh, should rise to the top here and knock off the Crows. So I think this one will be um, a good battle, but Sydney need to run away with it in the end and win by 18 points. And now for the Sunday games. These are the ones that are the season-defining ones. We've got first up at 12.30pm, the Dogs taking on the Giants at Mars Stadium. So if the Dogs win this, they'll lock in top spot. But if they drop this game... They're in danger of missing uh, out of the eight, but they should really be playing finals football, we'd think. But this is just a 50-50 game, should I be totally honest. Uh, the Dogs, first off, they've got a very good record at Mars Stadium, so that puts them in good stead. They play well down there in Ballarat, but the Giants, they can win anywhere away from home. Uh, they're one of the best away sides in the competition, so... Yeah, that probably makes a few dog supporters a bit nervous. And let's remember last year, the Giants were able to, I think, come back from uh, a bit of a margin and uh, pip out the dogs here in a close game. So to be honest, I think this one will be a close margin. The dogs will definitely gain some confidence, though, with near 100-point victory over North Melbourne. Uh, this is what we know so good about the dogs um, when they play at their best. Just so many contributors in that midfield and four to the ball. Norton, you, Hagen can take those marks and... Let's not forget about uh, Sam Darcy, who literally kicked seven goals too. So they've just got so much firepower for the ball. And Waitman too. Richard Bontrelaw, that is such a, a big trio uh, in that midfield. You can stop one, but the other two, if you let them off the leash, they can dominate and become match winners. And even though the Giants have been so efficient for the ball, they just keep on winning. I think it's now seven wins in a row. I feel like their defense and contest stuff is somewhat average and very gettable and a bit vulnerable. So... Yeah, it's sort of like the Dogs' strengths are playing against the Giants' weaknesses here. So that probably does put them in a bit of favour here, the Dogs heading into this game. However, the Giants do have a guy that goes by the name of Toby Bedford. So you'd think he'll try and lock down one on one of those uh, Dogs midfielders. And Ford of centre, they've got Brett Daniels, who has had such an underrated season. Let's be honest, he was definitely a match winner last week. And same with Jesse Hogan too. They've got to really try and shut down Jesse Hogan. You'd think Liam Jones can try and match Hogan hogan airily, you'd think. And they've definitely got to watch out on the Giants' ball movement here because it can definitely be dangerous. And that's probably what has hurt the Dogs with a few performances this year when they've lost. They've been unable to really defend ball movement too well. So this one's going to go either way. This is a really tough one. Do I trust the Dogs or the Giants here? I feel like the Dogs' contest, contested game, and I think four of the ball have got so many damaging targets. So I think I'll probably go with them here, but... Something's just telling me this is a game where GWS win. Sometimes when you write them off and you think the other side will win, they just find ways to win games of football. And um, they're playing with confidence. I've got, what, six or seven wins in a row. I think that ball movement is just so damaging too. So, And as well, of course, they're pressure. So if I can really um, you know, pressure, out-pressure uh, the dogs, especially around the footy, I like them here. And you know what? I'm going to be tipping the Giants here to uh, lock in potentially uh, a top a top two spot should uh, Port lose. So going to go to the Giants here. This one will be very close. It will go either way, but the Giants to win this by five points. And then the next game up at 3.20 p.m., we have got the Blues taking on the Saints at Marvel Stadium. The Saints season might be done, but 
Uh, as we did hear from that press conference a little while ago, Ross Lyon loves to be the Grinch and try and be a thorn in some good team side. He's been able to do that since the bye. And let's be honest, apart from a few poor patches, like against the Crows and also that poor performance uh, against, of course, the Brisbane Lions, they've played honestly quite well and they've been able to match it up against some good sides, pick up wins against the Cats and also the Swans, and they play well under the lid at Marvel. So can they do it against the Blues here with potentially still the absences of Mackay and Kerno for the ball? You'd think they certainly can. But the Blues just desperately need a win here. They don't necessarily need to win this game to lock in the top eight. They can lose this game and they can have three men to lose and they'll still be in the finals. Uh, but they just they just want to find a way to win here. This is the most important thing for their club. It was such a strong response last week against West Coast. Certainly proved me wrong. What I really loved about it is, in the end, it turned into a bit of a blessing of disguise when you have your tall, tall twin towels of Mackay and Kerno go down. Uh, it allows you to probably be a bit more creative with your ball use inside 50. Brody Kemp goes forward, I'm pretty sure picks three goals, but just some of their use inside 50 was really impressive. And even in the midfield, Cripps and Hewitt were dominant. Really like Cooper Law's debut. Uh, I thought he had some really nice touches in and under, so surely he keeps his spot in the side. Their ball movement was excellent too, which has definitely been a strength this year, Carlton, and a heavy improvement in their game. But how much do we take out of it? It was against, in the end, a pretty depleted West Coast Eagles side. So again, the Saints side who will be a lot more accountable. I think their midfield game has been really schmick. Jack Steele's been excellent in there. Uh, Sinclair's been able to float in the middle a bit and draw for, offer plenty of drive of half-back. Same with Wanganin Miller too. They should get back in Filippo too, which will definitely help their midfield stocks. And for the ball, Cooper Sharman, uh, Tim Membry, they've just been able to find some really good targets with the absence of Max King. What we have said, I think I said on the Power Rankings uh, video not so long ago, is their ball movement's been really eye-catching. They've been able to yeah, slowly build up and um, control the footy through that uncontested style and just pick up tar pick out targets um, in transition. So, yeah, if I can really bring those strengths, I honestly think I can pick the Blues here. Yeah, I think the Blues, they should win this game, but I might go with the Saints here. I just think they'll continue to be a thorn in good team sides and they're playing with a level of confidence. They're in form. I think the Saints picked this one against the Blues. I did actually tip St Kilda in that final five rounds video uh, not so long ago too. So, yeah, I think the Saints win this game. We'll go with the St Kilda Saints to knock off the Blues by 11 points. And now for the final game of the round, Fremantle taking on Port Adelaide at Optus Stadium. So with how my tips have gone so far, the Blues have left the door open, so if Freo win this game, hypothetically, they can definitely make the finals here 100%. So, need to win this game, of course, but they are going to be without Josh Tracy once again, however, um, which is just such a huge absence in their forward line. When they go inside 50, they're having to rely a lot of, of Jai Miss, of course, but they're just losing a bit of that marking power the last few weeks. Port, on a winning streak, uh, they're playing some excellent football, and what I've just really enjoyed is some of their midfield work has been outstanding. Uh, Willem Drew and Ollie Wines able to win that contested ball, but Horn, Francis, Rosie, and Butters, similar to, like, to, similar to a side like the Bulldogs. They've just got so many... Uh, damaging midfielders that's if one isn't firing the other two definitely can it's certainly going to be a really interesting midfield battle uh, Port Adelaide with Rosie Butters Horn Francis versus Do the Dockers with Brayshaw Sarong uh, and of course Hayden Young in there he's playing a little bit off the half forward line but some of his use in some 50 just so damaging so whose midfield is going to get on top that's going to be I think a key factor on who wins this game for Freo's defense now Alex Pierce is really showing Jesse Hogan was able to obliterate let's be honest uh, Brennan Cox um, so facing a bit more of a weaker forward line this week though for Fremantle's sake um, you know Radical Air playing forward do they bring back in Todd Marshall uh, they're still needing to tinker I think some of those key forwards forward of the ball uh, but they can't let Willie Rioli lose um, he's just been a bit of a match winner and he's been in fine form as well for the Dockers it is critical importance however that they've got to really get a bit of their run and carry game going um, a few performances as of late they've looked very timid with their ball movement uh, but when they especially at home when they're able to really chain a lot of those hand passes through the corridor or and catch out teams' defences, uh, that can be a factor into winning a game of footy for their sake. So, especially against uh, what we've seen, especially with Port Adelaide this year, if we're able to really catch them off the counter and um, you know beat them out in transition, that uh, you can definitely uh, find ways to win against a side like Port. Uh, this is really tricky. I think Fremantle, they can definitely win this game. It's really 50-50 though, but I just think Port Adelaide win this game. They're, they're, they're the side in more form, and I think away from home, they've been able to string together some good wins, and they have the wood over Fremantle too. So I just think Port Adelaide, especially in that midfield, um, they can definitely have uh, definitely change the game and have some match winners in there. So 
yeah, I think Pear win this game and then Fremantle season here. But this one could go really go either way. But Port Adelaide to win this game and we'll go the Pear. In a close one, but their class runs away with it and wins this one by 13 points. So everyone, there are my tips for the final round of the home away season. Let me know your tips down below in the comments section. I think a lot of these games are pretty straightforward. You'd think these teams win these games, but we've got a lot of 50-50 games, especially on the Sunday. So let me know your tips down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you did go into enjoy today's video. And until next time, I'll talk to you later. See you later, fellas.